right. I quit my warehouse job of 12 years. Hard work gets you nowhere. From Red Leg Piper. Oh boy. Let me see what he's got to say. So the quick answer as to how I left my warehouse distribution center job is for the last couple years before I put my two weeks in, I planned my escape behind the scenes really quietly without anybody knowing. I got my home right, my finances right, got all my debt paid off, stacked a lot of money, mm -hmm. and had something on the side prepared before I put my two weeks in. And nobody oh. knew. I didn't tell a single soul. Good. Until HR. Yeah, it's nobody else's business to whatever you're doing in your own life. Two weeks before I quit. I was at my warehouse distribution center job for almost 12 years. Started in 2010. And well, at that time, that was a pretty good job. Yeah. I mean, essentially, it's like, it's a warehouse job. Um, I mean, me personally, I've never had a warehouse job. Um, but I would guess, if anything, uh, you're taking stuff, you're, you're, you're using, like, uh, those little forklifts, you're putting shit on, like, the gigantic shelves, taking shit off the gigantic shelves, and uh, storing shit, stocking shit to be put either receiving from shipping or you're giving out to the shipping. Uh, that's more or less, I think what it is, but you know, it could be wrong. I don't know. Um, and it's very just monotonous. Uh, it's like a more or less like a factory. Uh, you're it. I would imagine it feels like you're a cog wheel inside a machine and that's not too fulfilling. It was a good work environment even though I was still loading trailers, what I was doing was I was in shipping department my entire mm. 12 years, loading trailers full of products to be sent out to stores. Okay. Well, about year six into it, I ended up staying in shipping, but I put in a driving position to get on a forklift in a reach trailer or reach truck. Mm -hmm. So my last six remaining years with the company, I was a forklift operator in shipping department. Again, you know, it was okay about year six, but I started to see a, a... I mean, it's just okay. When someone chooses like a job career and they say like, it's just okay. It's like, it's not really a surprise when somebody just ups and quits. I mean, people can put up with, like, okay jobs for only so long. And shit, maybe some people even retire on just okay jobs. Um, and maybe they will feel, like, a little bit of remorse. Maybe they'll feel a little bit of regret. But, I mean, that's the sacrifice that some people have to make. You know, men or women. Um not everybody is happy with their job at all. Uh, it just, it is what it is. And I wish there was like a better solution to this, but it doesn't really seem like it. I mean, at least in the immediate like context of like, uh, you know, like AI and robots, uh, you know, essentially, uh, maybe taking over jobs like this in the future. But I mean, I don't know heavy decline when management started changing, when HR started changing and the company got bought out by another company. Now, the job was still secured uh, more or less, mm -hmm. regardless. Uh, this company has been around since the early 1900s uh, so it's not going anywhere anytime soon. However, I, I quickly realized that the new management didn't give a shit about the team members and didn't give a shit about you know anything about kissing huh. ass to corporate 
which I mean that's should be relatively common sense about any job right mm -hmm. but it's kind of you know not easy to wrap your head around when you this job you have for so long was a good job right it was a good job it's not like I was going into a, a, a shitty job to begin with yeah where it was a toxic work environment it was just like a mid mid job you're not like entirely fulfilled you're not but then again on the flip side you're not entirely like unhappy about it you're just like kind of in the middle it paid probably like decently uh i mean i don't know what state this is in uh i would assume it's like give or take like five or five bucks you know whether or not where like where the average is for, for this type of job i mean let me see watch me bosh this uh forklift operator salary yearly depending on what state eh. i mean it's not like a horrible job but you're not gonna get rich off it either you're just like you're getting by for half my time there it was a good job and then slowly but surely management crept in and started allowing really bad team members to get away with a bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm all for hard work. I'm all for downtime as well. You know, when you get your job done and you got a little bit of downtime, I'm cool with that. You know, I, I you know, I used to do the same thing. Yeah. But the job always had to get done. And the unfortunate thing about it is that the new management that crept into this into this warehouse, into this distribution center, was so toxic oh. that they would allow the lazy people to sit around on pallets, go for half hour bath bathroom breaks, take longer regular breaks, just disappear off the off the floor. This seems like a good guy. And he was just simply like a victim of his environment. I mean, yeah, I could say, like, oh, if you're so unhappy, just up and leave. But it's it's not as easy as that. <laughs> it really isn't. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of people that, I mean, like, I've had jobs in the past where, I like, me personally, I would be, like, kind of in the middle of like that type of employee. Like I didn't go like above and beyond. Uh, but then again, I wasn't like, I wouldn't disappear for like a half hour or like at a bed for a bathroom break either. I was just like, kind of like in the middle, I would say. Um, but I have like came in contact with these type of people where they try to game the system of like every single solitary minute. Uh, I mean, and I get it. Like, you're trying to game the system. I'm trying to game the system, but by you trying to game the system, it's kind of fucking me over. And it's just, it, it, it sucks when this type of person gets hired. And because most of the time, this type of person doesn't really last that long on the job. And it's, but, but for the time that they are on, they do have a job. It's like, it makes your job exponentially more difficult than it has to be and by them not doing their shit it makes it so you kind of have to like do more uh to compensate for their stupidity or laziness um and that's kind of annoying because i mean where's the fairness i mean but it's like all oh, fairness all oh, who gives a shit Life isn't fair. Ugh. I mean, I get it, but geez. Go talk to random girls, and a lot of the management would, you know, flirt with the with the with the team members. These this guy or this management dude, I, maybe he sounds like to me. He sounds like a little bit younger. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> maybe he just does. You know, they they formed their own little clique. Mm-hmm. And I saw that coming a mile away, and I didn't like it. And you didn't want to be a part of it either. 
So if you're not with us, you're against us. In fact, I became they, they wanted me among all, a couple other hard working individuals in the department to take on the bulk of the work. Mm -hmm. And for a while there, I was stupid. Mm -hmm. And I did. And I found real quick that I'm doing more work for the same amount of pay. I'm yep. doing their work while they're slacking off and doing nothing while I'm getting paid the same amount of pay. No promotion, no extra money, no this, no this or that. Mm -hmm. The company started slowly going downhill. No incentives to come into work. No incentives for a lot of things. And Outside of your normal paycheck. That's it. I'm probably preaching to the choir with probably 99% of jobs out there. Yeah. And the, hold on, I'm not just bitching, okay? I, I got, I'm going somewhere with this. That's okay. About how I got out of it and why I think you should too. The company, the, the management got so bad from top down that my wife actually worked there too for almost 20 years. She, she got me in. She worked mm. there for 20 years. I was there for 12. She was there for 20. Damn. And she even saw it because she put in to be a manager. Now, like I said, she doesn't have any, you know, no bad attendance, no write-ups, no nothing. Squeaky clean, you know, history with the company for 20 years. <laughs> I had squeak, uh, squeaky clean attendance uh, across the board. And no, no strikes on me, no write-ups or nothing. You know, I was a hard worker, I thought, and she was a hard worker. We got stuff done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's just... Yeah, you, there are the, the types of people that are seemingly like the glue that keep businesses afloat. And by simply merely doing your job, period, you put yourself above so many other people... Um, because you're going to quick, you quickly realize, you know, upon entering like, uh, the working force or, or whatever, that there's a lot of people that are, that just do the minimum. And there's a lot of people that do below the minimum. Seldom are there, is there ever any, anyone ever that goes like above and beyond you know, whenever you do like a, a job review thing or whatever for like, uh, like KPIs or something like that, key performance indicators, your semi-annual like job review thing or your annual job review thing, it'll be like on like a five point period, like one through five, or it'll be like from zero to like one and it'll be like 0 0.25.5 and so on and so forth. And you are lucky if you can get like a three or, or something like that. If you're average, consider yourself lucky because a lot of the times there'll be like multiple categories of like the one through five thing or whatever your system uses, one through 10, one through five. And as long as you can score of like an average of five, you won't get fired. If you score like some ones and twos in many areas, they're probably like management is probably like looking at you. They can't really fire you yet because you haven't really fucked up yet, but it's like you're getting looked at harder. If it's like a good uh like management team, like from the top down, if not, I mean, they don't give a shit then. I mean, it is what it is. But... Seldom have, have I ever seen, like, uh, people that get, like, these lower than average scores, like, last, like, 20 plus years in their, in their job. It's, it's very rare. Unfortunate that the management, even though my wife wanted to become a manager at one point, they were promoting the wrong people. It was the women that was going around sleeping around with the other managers mm -hmm. and that were wearing hoochie shit were getting promoted. And my wife obviously ain't like that. And so she put in for manager three fucking times. Mm. 
Three fucking times she put in for manager. And they denied her all the fuck every fucking time. Meanwhile, they're hiring, they're they're promoting women that are sleeping around, women that are flirting with other managers, wearing hoochie shit, running equipment off the off the dock and doing all these just tons of shit that they don't even know what the fuck they're doing. Damn, that sounds really frustrating, dude. I mean, because, you know, if you have, like, like a single household and it's just, like, you and your wife, then, like, her not getting promoted, it also is also, like, indirectly, uh, like, a, like, a hit to, like, your household and you, kind of. So, it's understandable to, for someone to, like, feel like it's personal. Um... And I mean, I'm just like an outside viewer, it's just like commenting on some some shit. But like, ugh. bro, that sucks. <laughs> uh, I mean, that situation. I mean, I've actually seen like another situation kind of like that, but it wasn't with like women. It was more like race based, and where like some people that were new to a job uh, were getting promoted before somebody else that I knew, but the person that I knew was like black and they were like way more qualified for the promoted job position. And it's like, why is my buddy not getting hired or not getting promoted when all these other people like just got hired and they're already getting promoted. It's like, what the fuck? But somebody who dedicated 20 fucking years to your company, with a squeaky clean record. Who, who's been in all the other departments. Every other fucking department. She knew the work of every other fucking department. You turned her down three fucking times. And you hire the hookers of the company. Or you promote the hookers of the company. What a slap in the fucking face, man. Yeah, I mean... It's not a company's job... To take your interests... Uh, like seriously, it's not, you should not rely on a company for anything to, for, you shouldn't rely on a company to, to do anything right, dude. It seems like the right decision would have been to hire your wife in a, like the managerial position because she knew that was just, just knew the job way better than everyone else. But I mean, shit. It seems like the company had other things in mind. What a slap in the fucking face. Not only that, but it was just, you know, I got tired of being used. I got so tired of being used for what? For no incentive whatsoever other than to make, to work more harder catch other people's red lights it was like red light fucking district dumping that motherfucker for some of y'all who don't know what red light means is that the 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 conveyor belts have so much product on them mm. that it's getting backed up that Ooh. i ended up having to go up to these red lights because other lazy motherfuckers weren't doing their job and it like it's like they the lane exploded and fucking boxes are falling off the fucking line and shit mm. and i'm trying to go in there and fix their shit taking on the responsibility of the managers and some of their work to, to get their workload to, you know, some of the, their workload off their back so their managers and their IOs aren't jumping down their back. In the meantime, half those motherfuckers are standing at their computer, ain't doing shit. Ain't doing shit. Walking around, not helping. Flirting around with other team members. Sitting in their fucking office. Make, making themselves look busy. Hmm. The whole look busy thing. Uh, I mean, I've been told this, like, when I was younger. Like, I used to work at CeCe's, like, CeCe's Pizza. And that's just, like, a little pizza buffet place uh, where pizzas are, like, constantly coming out of the oven and I would be, like, the cutting guy. Like, I would have to, like, catch them and shit and cut them up and, like, divvy them out. And... 
I have been told by like a manager or multiple managers that like, yeah, sure. You know, whenever, uh, things are slow, you can, uh, go take a break and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, but just, you know, when it's busy, uh, just, and you're not doing anything, just look busy. I'm like, what does that mean? Me being like a little 15, 16 year old kid. What does that mean? Look busy. Ah, oh, just go grab a room and just start sweeping or cleaning something. And, and just, uh, you know, go, go wipe up the, the hot plates that are underneath the pizzas and whatnot. And it's like all this like menial, stupid shit. Uh, it, I'm just like, uh, it, it's ridiculous. And like I said, it's not like tiered. I mean, the next level up would have been cause you got team members and that's it. Team members managers yep and above them were ios inbound outbound uh uh management and then ma uh maintenance yep the team members are the lowest po like totem on the totem pole they're the most interchangeable people one jumps out you you hire another one and uh, yeah you're just another brick in the wall and God forbid you be the good guy and actually do your job because from doing that, you just take on so much more unneeded stress from the other team members that don't want to do their job. I mean, that's why the whole uh, quiet quitting thing uh, exists. I mean, that was a term I learned like maybe a year ago from like watching some of these like videos and whatnot of, uh, you know, workers just doing the bare minimum to keep their job. Uh, that's it. There is, you should never go above and beyond what, uh, you know, whatever your job, uh, duties call for. Never just do the minimum because I mean, I mean, logically it's like, if you want to put in more effort, you should get more pay, but that's not how it works in like just companies and, stuff like that for at least like team team member level people and and that sucks and then obviously you got corporate and shit like that but if you're just a bottom of the barrel team member y'all get paid the fucking same it don't matter yeah. if you've been there what you know two years or 20 years yeah y'all's getting paid the same mm -hmm. and i dedicated 12 fucking years to this company man 12 fucking years my wife put in 20 fucking years. For what? For fucking what? These companies don't give a shit. You could die tomorrow and they'll have a moment of silence over their PA, if you're lucky, if you were on their side, on their good side, no matter how long you were there, you'll get maybe a minute of fucking silence and then they replace you the same day. There's no incentive to work at these warehouse jobs anymore. And it's not just because of the lazy people that they're bringing in. And this is true. I've seen it across the board at this job, at this warehouse for 12 years. And my wife's seen it for 20 years. They bring in the lazy people. And all they do is sit around on their phones, talking, bullshitting around, not getting the job done. And this isn't just Gen Z. This is fucking millennials, yeah. Gen Xers, baby boomers. They're all fucking not working. None of them are fucking working. Mm -hmm. There's always that type of person that is quote unquote ageist. And it's always like the uh, 50, 60, 7 year old guy at a job. And he's like, oh, back in my day, uh, you know, we used to work hard for our money. People these days are soft and so on and so forth. But, bro, honestly, <laughs> ever since, like, smartphones came out and you have, like, reliable internet on them, I think that was, like, the downfall. Well, in, in some respects. In other respects, I mean, smartphone was, like, fantastic. And, you know, being able to have, like, a little device in your pocket that you can, like, easily access information on is great in most cases. But... In some cases, like this one, for like a very physically demanding job, um, I don't know. It just seems like it didn't really help. 
and you got maybe 10%, 10% of the workforce in there is doing 90% of the fucking work for the same fucking pay. I took on a lot of the roles of management doing startup uh, startup meetings and shit. Well, that was my own fault. Mm-hmm. But like I said, my mind wasn't right because it was a good job for the first few years. It was worth going into mm-hmm. back in 2010. And then shit just changed with management. And it starts at the top. People want to say, management want to say, well, we, if we could only get good workers in, if we could only get good workers in, that's like 50% of the freaking problem, man. Half the problem, if not more, the problem is them, the management. So you divide it up into like a 50-50 thing of like team members and management. How many people are the team members and how many people are the management probably way less in the management than there are team members, right? I mean, what you expect, you know, if I'm going to be like a little bit generous, management is probably doing some things to keep the wheels running, like scheduling, financing, uh, shit, divvying out paychecks and whatnot. And, uh, I don't know, hiring people, uh, trying to account for, you know, the inbound, outbound trucks and whatnot. Uh, I mean, I, I don't exactly know. I'm just like riffing more or less. And it and you rely on your team members to do everything that they're supposed to do. Uh, and it's like seemingly a 50-50 thing. But unless you have team members, you can't really do all of that other shit. So... I don't know if it's 50-50 when it's like one or two people. I mean, I don't know what the managerial team is like. It, you know, I could say like one person can manage like a bunch of people, but I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's a 50-50 thing. They're the reason why people don't want to work for them because they don't hold other others accountable and they sure as hell don't hold that same standard and hold themselves accountable. They don't want to get in there and help you out. I'm not saying all of them. There was a few managers in that company over the 12 years. I can count on probably one or two hands out of hundreds, though. Mm. 10% were worth a damn. And those 10% of those managers that were worth a damn were overworked themselves, and their hands were tied. And there was shit they couldn't do. But the other 90%, the vast majority of management in these warehouse jobs, they're fucking worthless, man. (laughs) They're pulling them off the street with a degree instead of hiring within with people who have experience and know the building, know, you know, know the system, know the departments. A dang piece of paper always blocking people from going up just a a silly little piece of paper oh it's an associates it's a bachelor it's a master's it's a doctorate you know and i'm not just jaded because my wife didn't get it three fucking times of course i am a little bit fuck them yeah you know who you are if you're watching good but it's just hire with it like promote within man Instead of pu- pulling people who have a degree, your degree that doesn't that and that person with the degree that has no idea how like the actual business works. They just got out of school, got their little bachelor, or master in, in like business or whatever, and then they're just like, okay, I got my little degree. Now I can uh, get whatever job I want. I mean. But conversely, I mean, I don't know the job hours of like the, like a warehouse job or anything like that, but like, I mean, there's nothing stopping anybody else from getting this type of degree either outside of like money. Um, I mean, and that's like more than I know. I mean, I don't know dick about ass. I mean, all I have is like a little 
associate's degree uh, and not really much else to show for it. I'm, I, like, I could go get my bachelor, but what would it fucking be in? Free ain't shit, man. Just because you have a degree don't mean you know how to fucking do operations in a building. Mm-hmm. There's team members that know how to do operations more than some of these fucking managers. It's ridiculous. It's not worth it anymore. It's not worth going into these uh, uh, warehouse distribution jobs where you're you, you're treated like dog shit. Well, I think this guy was treated like dog shit because he was like the workhorse of his specific like team and location or whatever. He was the reliable guy. Maybe it was worth it back then to be the reliable guy, but not so much now, it seems. And then you you might be the 1% that's working hard. The other 90% are dog shit too. They don't want to fucking work. They want to sit around. They want to do the least amount of work as possible and mm -hmm. get paid the most as possible mm -hmm. for as long as possible. That's the goal. Work as little as you can get paid the most you can where what's the the goal of the manager pay the least you can and get the most work out of each worker that you can those are polar opposites uh, uh, polar opposite goals of you know like m like managers and team members uh i mean if you're a team member and you're actually coming in and even just meeting like and just doing your job, period, then you have already set yourself up for failure. That's why you need to not quit. I'm not saying to quit. Don't quit because right now you need a job. I'm saying use your warehouse job as a stepping stool to, to quiet quit, to get yourself in yeah. a place to where you can walk out and work at any job you want like I did. Yeah. And be happy doing a job you enjoy, even if it's less money, to where at any point in time, you can say, you know what, I don't like this job, I don't need you, you might need me, but I don't need you. And what's even worse about this is, I don't even know what type of job this is, this person probably doesn't, I don't know if he has like a, like a state retirement thing that's uh, like transferable, or if it's like a private retirement thing. I have no idea. And that's 12 years of this person not putting into any retirement or, or 401k or anything like that. And it's like, you just lost so much time. Cause I've been retired for the last two years and I made oh. a video about how I'm trying to search for purpose. Like I, you know, I, I had financially everything in order. I had all my ducks in order mm. to quit this job of 12 years. And the reason why I didn't quit right away is because I have kids. I needed to make sure that I had a plan in, pl in place. And it took me five years of the, of the 12 years to plan to get out from my mm -hmm. escape. And I'm here to tell you, you can do the same thing. Plan your escape. Don't quit. Plan your escape. Because these people, they, these, these warehouse jobs, these, these management, they don't give a shit. They don't care. And it's not just the management. It is people that don't want to work, man. It is people. And they sit there quietly laughing at you while you're hustling like a fucking rabbit all over the dock floor trying to get the shit done in time just so you mm -hmm. can go home and get paid the same amount of fucking money that these lazy motherfuckers are getting paid. And management is to blame. Who the I hope more people come to this realization sooner in life rather than later because... The sooner you can come to this realization, I don't know. It's like, the sooner you can come to this realization, I don't know. At, at, at that point, you could, you have, you have to make a decision on like what you want out of life or what you want to do. And I don't know. It's like, you want to, you want to enjoy like the shit that society has to offer, but you don't want to work, but you like having stuff and doing stuff and raising a family and having a wife and, 
uh, kids and doing all this stuff, but like you need money, but you don't want to work for like a dog shit job. And it just, I don't know. It's maybe, maybe I'm like a little young and I haven't came to this realization yet, but like, I mean, I know, I knew about quiet quitting. Um, but I don't know. I'm just like going off on a, a tangent. I mean, I want to hear what he's got to say. Who the fuck wants to work like that? Who wants to work like that? Nobody. Nobody wants to put in the maximum amount of effort for the least amount of reward. That's literally nobody. And, and on top of who wants to work like that, who the fuck wants to be in management over that? Well... I don't think management, I mean, you said it yourself, like there's only 10% of management that is actually worth a damn and 90% uh, are just like cruising and coasting really. So as much as team members take advantage of the system in that they quiet quit, uh, may, I think maybe 90% of managers kind of do the same thing to take advantage of the system. Shit has to change, man. It's crazy. These companies, the management does not care for you, for me, for anyone. They're about the dollar. And I get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I get it. Corporate America, right? Corporatism. I get it. I'm for it too. But at the same time, grab your fucking balls, managers. Grab your fucking balls, man. Start HR. Grab your fucking balls. Start <laughs> paying attention to the ones that are depressed and angry. Because the ones that are depressed and angry are most likely the ones that give a shit about your company. Mm. The ones that are just laughing it off and chit-chatting and bullshit, they don't give a fuck about your company. They don't give a fuck about work. And here, that's a good, good insight because he sees these people, every, these people every day, and he just knows. You know, most of the team members, they're just laughing, cajoling, talking, messing around on the phones. Like they don't give a shit. The guys that are depressed actually doing their job actually giving a shit it's like what do you have to gain from giving a shit about your job just quiet quit you're put you're giving yourself way more stress it's the ones that become bitter in you in the job that you need to be paying attention to and it's crazy because that's what they want that's what these companies want is for you to become bitter. So you walk out. So you quit. Mm -hmm. They don't want somebody who's been there 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. They want you out. I'm in my 40s now and I'm starting to realize late that you should never count on one single job. Yeah. Never count on one single job for your finances, for any kind of security, because there's no such thing as job security. Always be up in your skills. Always be look, maybe even looking into a trade. Looking into bettering yourself and planning your escape. If you li if you work in some kind of dead end job, warehouse job, factory, they're all the same. You know, fucking everybody wants a a job with a pension. Well, pensions are long dead and gone almost, and everything's just a 401k now. You know, union jobs aren't what they fucking used to be either. Nope. You know, the union reps don't give a shit about you. They just keep the shitty employees. That's all they care about. 
most unions anyways, I'm not going to speak for all, but most unions don't give a shit anymore. I want you, if you enjoy your job and you love your job and you're satisfied in warehouse distribution work, typical <laughs> warehouse job, <laughs> more power to you. If you're happy, you're happy. But if you're like me and you got sick and tired of being sick and tired of that warehouse job, not so much because of the job itself, but because of the work environment, the toxic work environment and the shitty management. Plan your escape. Plan to quiet quit. Don't quit. Use it. Use that job as a stepping stone financially to get yourself out. Yeah. I mean, I think one of my funnest jobs in one sense was my one of my first jobs uh like working at CC's Pizza and it wasn't so much the job that was like physically demanding i mean it was like i don't know kind of physical kind of not but what really made it fun was uh i was surrounded by a bunch of other dudes my own age and we were all into like the same thing that's really what made it for me um, but back at, back then, I think I stayed there for like, what, three, four years or something like that. Like right out of high school, worst decision ever. Um, like I should have like just went into college, like right after high school, but I, everyone was talking about like, Oh, you gotta, uh, yeah, you just take a year and think about it or whatever. And it's like, Oh yeah, sure. But then that one year turned into two years and then turned into three years and then, it was like one random day I was just sick and tired of uh, getting fucked at that job and then I was like okay I'm out <laughs> this is stupid I didn't even put my two weeks in I'm like this is dumb I'm out of here <laughs> but on the whole uh, like my old ass CC job was the thing that made it fun was the people uh, people can like make a job great or they can make it uh, like your worst fucking experience of your life. And yeah, I mean, that's just my two cents on it, man. Don't be like me, man, and invest 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years into a company that don't give a shit about you. And that only promote the shitty workers, the hookers of the company. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no fucking sense. Makes no sense, man. Shit makes no sense. I'm definitely not saying to walk out on your responsibilities. I'm not saying any of that. Do the right thing. Stick it out. Do what you have to do. To provide for yourself, provide for your family, pay your bills, stack some bread, do what you have to do. Don't quit. I'm not saying to quit. Usually what I have learned, uh, in my, I don't know, in my uh, limited experience of life, I mean, I'm only, only 34, um, usually when someone says, I'm not saying do this, Indirectly, they are saying do this. So, <laughs> I'm not saying to quit. I'm not saying to quit. Uh, if you use a couple of your brain cells, it's like, what is he actually saying? He's saying that you should quit. It's too much stress. Mentally, physically. Just, just fucking quit. Get out of there. Do something else. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. That's just what I've learned. I'm saying plan for your quiet quit. I'll make another video on how to do that. The warehouse, warehouse work. Pfft. That's just for the birds. At least my experience anyways with it of 12 years, maybe it was just the company that I was with, but I would assume the vast majority are the same. 
We just want good management, man. Because good, good management, good management, real good management makes for a good work environment. And that in itself produces good employees and team members. Nobody wants to wake up and go to a toxic job. Yeah. It's soul crunching, man. It's soul crushing. And yeah, I'm bitter. Of course I'm fucking bitter, man. And now I'm just trying to find purpose now that I've been out for two years and unemployed. Thinking about going back to some kind of employment to find some kind of purpose. Because it's good to have purpose. The only difference, the only difference is I'm going to a job because I want to be there. Not because I have to be there. Because I got my shit together over the course of five years. In that work environment that I didn't want to stay into, but I did because I knew I had to. And I know you can do the same thing if you put your mind to it. And you get discipline. And you find discipline. You can get to a place to where you can be somewhere because you want to be. Not because you have to be. More and more people are, are quiet quitting their yeah. jobs. Their warehouse jobs. Their fa- this I find this to be too true. And it's not just it's not just warehouse jobs. It's like if you have like that one street that you go down and all like the, the fast food joints are down that road, the Walmart is down that road, the Publix is down that road. Uh what else? Like all the the clothes stores are down that road. The mattress firm is down the road. Gas stations on a couple corners. Unless you plan on like trying to be like a manager or like a, a district person for that company, like the team member position in all of those companies, they're just they're dead end jobs. It's just like. Of course, all of those people like in those uh, team member positions are going to quiet quit. They're just doing like the bare minimum. Because that's all that's that is required of that position. I mean, maybe if you like it, I mean, and you legitimately like it, I mean, that's fine. But like you want to put in more effort. Do you really think you're going to get like exponentially more like return for your effort in that job? Probably not factory jobs because they're seeing that it may it may pay okay but the work environment is just toxic and the management makes it that way promoting fucking hookers in the company <laughs> bringing on people that have no idea what the fuck they're doing how to run a how to run departments how to do any kind of processing HR, anything. It's always externally they're hiring instead of within. What a fucking shame. What a fucking shame. Damn. Uh, so, yeah, man. I mean, that sucks to quit a job because you just have had enough of running around. I mean, that's great. You have like a, a little pension already, a little retirement. That, and that kind of softens the blow, but I don't know, like, even if you're like a young person today and you're trying to like, and let's say you don't go to college, maybe you don't go get your associate, you don't get your bachelor, you don't get a master or anything and anything like that. It's like, yeah, you could do a trade and trades are actually like pay pretty decently. But I mean, I don't know, like those type of jobs where it's like the position's called like team member. Um, there's just no, fulf- to me, there's like no f- fulfillment in any of it. Um, and I don't know if you should look to your job for fulfillment or maybe you should look to your, your hobby toward fulfillment. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just my two cents. I mean, overall, good video. I mean, just venting about all this shit. I mean, it's good to just air it out, dude, 100%. But uh, because I'm sure 
there's a lot of people that feel the same way. For sure, dude. But overall, good video. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is, man. Uh, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, but other than that, I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right, later.